Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Taylor and I have been running my own small handmade business for about seven years or seven years in January. And today I'm doing a video on shipping and postage and sort of all that sort of stuff. And hopefully I'll be able to answer any questions that you guys have. It's been a really highly requested video, so we'll get right into it. So before we enter this video, please make sure you've liked this video and subscribed to my channel because it really helps me out. Just a disclaimer, I do not work for Australia Post. I've just been shipping with them for almost seven years. So I do know a little bit, I don't know everything, but I'm here to help uh, in any way I can. So this video will be mostly about shipping uh, light items and small items uh, and stuff that doesn't break easily. I am not familiar with stuff that's fragile or quite heavy, so I won't be able to help you in those sort of areas, but this video might be beneficial anyway. Uh, I'll be doing a few different bits in this video. As always, I'll have timestamps in the description and in the comment section, so you'll be able to sort of skip to wherever you find you might want to watch more. So I sell scrunchies and hair bows, so they're quite thin items. So we'll start with shipping in envelopes first. I've been shipping in envelopes for a long time, predominantly the only shipping method I use. So I'll just do like a little rundown on shipping in envelopes. Shipping in envelopes, you usually use just Australia Post stamps. So I've got a box here. The normal prices are $2.20 for up to 125 grams, and it has to be below two centimeters thick or 20 millimeters. So if your item is too bulky, it won't be able to be classed as an envelope and you won't be able to ship it at this rate. And this doesn't have any tracking either. You can purchase tracking, but I'll go through that in a second. The next price is $3.30 and the other price is $5.50. It just depends on the weight. So this is what I normally use. I usually don't send tracking unless the customer purchases it, <laughs> purchases the tracked envelope or tracked parcels. And I'll usually use two stamps for most of my items because they don't weigh a lot. I'll show you the sort of envelopes I ship in. I get all these items from e eBay and it's a person called EB Packaging. Um, so this is my first one. So that's a really quite a small one. I usually fit one or two scrunchies in this and I don't normally use them anymore because I have a thank you card that is quite big. So it doesn't really fit. So I kind of haven't used these in a while. I'd mostly use them for overseas shipping. I will go through that later as well. So that's the size of that one. And I also paint them normally, but I haven't painted for a couple, couple months now. I've just been too busy. This is my second size. This will usually fit about three scrunchies in it or maybe three, four bows. This one's a CD mailer size. If you want to know the sizes, just comment below. I don't know off the top of my head, but I know sort of what they're called. Like this is a CD mailer size. So as you can see, they're quite thin. Then we've got this size. So that's like a A5 size. And that's how big that one goes to. So that one will usually fit about six scrunchies, six bows. And then we've got this one. So this one's an A4 size. And that will fit quite a lot of items in there. This will cost me $3.30 to ship because it weighs a bit more because of more products and the actual cover mailer itself weighs a bit more. These are also quite cheap. I buy these in bulk. The really small one, they're like only a couple of cents, like 20, 10 cents. And we'll talk about tracking as well. There's two ways you can do tracking up through Australia Post for envelopes. There's the register post option, which is just a label sticker. And then there's these. So these are what I use because they're actually cheaper than the registered post uh, stickers that you can get. So you've got this size. They also have a really small size, uh, which I think is called small, but they can only do five millimeters. So that's perfect if you're doing stickers or stuff that is very, very thin. But for items like scrunchies or bows, that sort of stuff, you'll have to send them in the medium to large size because they have the max thickness at 20 millimeters rather than five. This one I don't like as much because it's like paper, whereas this is like card. I hope that they bring out a different one, which is a bit thicker because I don't like how flimsy it is. And I always have to use like plastic when I use these because I don't want to get my products damaged if like the paper rips. So as I said before, you can get a small one and they're $2.95 each, or you can buy them in packs of 10, which are a little bit cheaper. Then you've got the medium, which is this one. So that can fit up to 20 millimeters and it can go max weight of 500 grams. So that's quite a lot of grams really. And these are $4.95 from Australia Post or they're $47 for a pack of 10. You do get a little bit cheaper if you buy in bulk. I'll just do a little side note. You cannot purchase these through 
does post business for like cheaper prices. Like you can do, do with parcels, but we'll go through that later as well. Then we got the large ones. So large is also 500 grams, also 20 millimeters. These are 5.95. They are a dollar more expensive than the mediums, but you can get them in packs of 10 for $56.50. That does make it quite a bit cheaper. I print out every single person's address regardless. I will copy and paste them from my Shopify or my Etsy. You can get extensions for Shopify, which I have used in the past when I have like 300 orders to complete because this does take, it only takes about five minutes when you've only got 20 or 30 orders, but when you've got 300, it'll take a long time. Yeah, I usually just copy and paste their address into a Word document, have it in rows of three, and then I'll print them out and cut them up. So I would usually just put their address there. I'll just tape it on and that's all I'll do. And that's the same with the envelopes as well. I do not hand write anymore because it just got to a point where it was taking a very, very long time. So for registered that you can get uh, actual envelopes that have the registered tracking and signature on delivery, or you can get labels. So we'll go through the registered tracking and signature on delivery that have them already printed on the envelopes first. So these are a bit more expensive. So you're paying $5.40 for a 250 gram envelope. But the thing is it has to be below five millimeters. So that's tiny. So again, that would only be for like stickers or very thin items, very, very thin items. And then the other cost would be $7.20 and that's 500 grams and 20 millimeters. So that's very similar to this one where that's a dollar 25 different. So it's a dollar 25 more expensive, but you do get signature on delivery with the registered post. So it just depends on what you would prefer to do there. I personally don't use the registered post option because I don't feel it's necessary to have signature and delivery, especially for scrunchies because they don't cost a lot to make. I mean, if it's something that was very expensive, I would probably do signature and delivery, but then again, I'd probably do a parcel rather than just an envelope. Then we've got the labels. So you can buy labels in bulk, $4.30 per article. So that's this thing here. They are yeah, just a sticker you put on like rigid mailer or just a normal envelope. But you also have to pay stamps with that. So you have to put stamps, which would be like $2.20. So that ends up what, $6.50. So you're still paying more for the registered post than you would be for the tracked ones. And you can also get them boxes, which is a box of 50 for $180. I think the main difference is obviously the signature on delivery, but also with the labels um, that you can like peel off and put it on your own packaging. So if I was really determined to have like this sort of look rather than the green plain packaging, I was really concerned about that. I'd probably go for the registered post and obviously it includes signature on delivery, but I don't particularly care or mind about that. The only reason I'd probably change if I really wanted to have them in the rigid mailers, because I do find rigid mailers are 100% better than just your normal envelopes, because obviously rigid, they won't bend, especially if you're doing like cake toppers or other thin things that can snap, like risen items in particular. Things can easily pop out of the normal envelopes as well. I've had that happen once or twice. Something has sliced it and it popped out my products and the customers end up with nothing. So next I'll talk about international shipping when it comes to envelopes. So at the moment, Australia Post, as far as I'm aware, do not offer this uh, because of COVID-19. In late March or early April, I'm pretty sure it was April like the 8th or something, they stopped doing international letters because of the backlog and just it was just too much on the system. So at the moment, they're not doing them uh, as far as I'm aware because of that, they haven't introduced them back yet. Even if they had, I personally wouldn't use it right now because I know how much of a mess uh, United States Postal Service is at the moment and Australia Post is very delayed as well, especially coming into Christmas season. And then I know from the last seven years, it must be the weather because everything gets delayed in February and January. It's just, I find those months worse than December for posting letters to international residents. So I'll just get right into it and pretend that there is, that you can still ship it that way. And maybe when you do watch this video, maybe it'll be available again. It's $3.20 for a 50 gram envelope. The $3.20, just a little side note, the $3.20 is for uh, like Europe, United States, uh, Canada. You would actually get a little bit cheaper if you're sending to New Zealand or Asia Pacific region, region in around Australia because it's closer. So that's really cheap to send like worldwide 
but has no tracking. In normal times, so before COVID, I shipped, I probably shipped about 3,000 of these envelopes worldwide, mostly to the United States. On the Australia Post website, it says it usually takes five to 10 business days, I think, or very similar. But in my experience, it usually takes two to three weeks. Very rarely, it took four weeks and even more rarely it took six. So I would usually say that your items would arrive between one and six weeks if you choose non-track. But usually my customer would be fine with that because I made it very clear that you'd have to pay quite a bit more for the tracking if they wanted it. As for lost mail, barely any. I can't even recall that many over the last seven years, maybe three. Um, I've had to refund and like if you think about how much money I made because I've had such cheap shipping like it definitely makes it worth it to refund I've sold 3,000 different orders because of my cheap shipping option so you have to weigh out the cost of the risk involved the three dollars 20 is for 50 grams and then it grows up so I think the next bracket's around seven or eight dollars and that's um, probably for maybe 125 grams up to 125 grams and then it grows up again so I think 12 or 13. And again, that doesn't include tracking. And again, you need to actually purchase your envelopes or your rigid mailers. I found I couldn't send my rigid mailers overseas, only the really small one that I showed you before because it weighed too much. I would have to send in envelope. These are sort of envelopes I would send overseas. So these are just from Kmart. So these, I think were about 30 or 40 cents each. And then I had like this bigger one. And then I had these ones, which are the plain white ones. And I could fit six in this sort of style, but it cost me, I think around the seven or $8 mark because of the weight, because uh, it was over 50 grams. You have to declare what you're sending. This is what you have to send. So this is a customs document CN22. So you'd have to attach one of these to every single letter that you sent overseas. Doesn't matter if it was going to uh, New Zealand or like the Asia Pacific. Pretty much all you have to do is fill out the description. So that was obviously bows and scrunchies. Then you'd have to like tick why you're sending the item. So like there was gift, merchandise, merchandise, document, plant, animal, food products, commercial sample. Um, to tick merchandise. And then you have to put in how much the item weighed and then how much the item was like valued at and then your signature. That part there would be attached to the back of the envelope, whereas this part would be kept by your post office people. And that just has like your details just in case they get audited and whatnot. And another side note, you can't put these just in a like Australia post box. Um, you need to lodge them in store. As for express or track options when sending overseas in letters, you can't do it with products. Almost any Australia Post business you go to, or even if you purchase them online, if they find out it's not a document, uh, you'll be in a lot of trouble and you may have to pay extra fees. Tracking for envelopes, so you can't send them because as you can see on that little green slip, it has to have items content declaration. So if you put like scrunchies or hair bows or anything that isn't documents in the prepaid envelopes, they'll know about it and probably find you. Won't be a lot, like it's not like a scary amount or anything, but they'll probably charge you for a parcel rather than an envelope and you'll get like a fee in the mail. There is a risk associated with that if you do decide to do that. I highly suggest don't do it because it literally says on the thing it's for documents only. And yeah, that's for the international letters. We're tracking an international express post with tracking, which is also a letter option. Okay, so let's get into parcels. So I'll go through domestic first and then we'll go through international again, uh, just like we did with the envelopes. With parcels, I highly suggest getting an Australian Post business account. It could add up eventually and you might get discounts. And I'll just like to point out the reason I use Australia Post business account is because there is bands and you get bigger discounts if you're in different bands. So there's like band one, band two, band three, band four, band five. I don't know if there's any band six. I'm not too sure. I'm currently in band three. The reason I don't use Etsy or Shopify to print my labels is because from my experience, when I've tried to see how much it would cost, it was more expensive to purchase through Etsy than it was to purchase through Australia Post. Then with Shopify, they use Sendle, I believe. I'm not actually eligible to use Sendle because I am rural Victoria. I am quite far out and they don't offer that service to me because of how far I am from like the actual cities and stuff. So first we'll do the prepaid satchels. So prepaid satchels look like this. This is a small one. This one's obviously express, so it's got the yellow. And then there's a red one as well, which is just normal. I don't have any red ones with me because I've been sending in my own packaging lately. If it fits in there and it's below five kilos, you can send it. So I always purchase in bulk. I'll never 
purchase just a single satchel because it is a lot cheaper if you purchase uh, 10 at a time. I think you purchase 100 as well, but I've never done that. <laughs> so for a small satchel, uh, which is up to five kilos, it's $9.20 for the regular post, so no express, um, or you pay $89.70 for a pack of 10. So it makes it a bit cheaper. And then for express satchels like this one, it's $12.20 up to five kilos, or for a pack of 10, it's $118.95. These are good because you've already got the actual packaging with it. So you've already got the satchel. You don't have to pay extra to purchase another satchel. Okay, so own packaging. So you can purchase uh, satchels uh, to send in your own packaging, but I personally don't because I like my scrunchies to arrive full and like luscious. I used to send in the satchels and they would kind of like crease down. I use boxes now. So for a flat rate box, it is $8.95 for up to 500 grams. And that's for like band one basics. Because I'm in band three, for like rural, I save like 40 or 50 cents. And then for um, Metro Melbourne, I save like a dollar, a dollar 20. Like it is a big difference and it adds up so quick. So yeah, I'd definitely recommend Australia Post business account. And I'll just show you what I send in. So I ship in these. Um, this box is perfect for me. So that's the size. It fits a lot of scrunchies in there and a lot of bows too. Now I'm going to show you Australia Post business. So I'll probably just switch to what you, you'll see on my screen. This is pretty much what it looks like. So you can go into orders, history, track. So if I go into orders, so you've got an option to bulk import or add an order. At the moment, I'm just adding orders because it's just more simple for me. I haven't quite con conquered the bulk import part, um, but I know you can link it up to like eBay and you can probably link it up to Etsy and Shopify too quite easily. I just haven't done that yet. I'm gonna find someone that lives in like a major city. Okay, so I've put that person in. So just above where I am right now, and it will have their address and details. So down below, we've got send tracking notification to this recipient, optional. I so you can put their phone number in or the email address. I usually just put their email address in from the order. And then if you scroll down, um, additional information, this field is displayed on label and can be used. So you can use a reference number. I don't use this because as I said before, I print out all of my addresses on Word document first. So I will use that address and just stick it to the parcel. So I know whose it is. Uh, but I know some people um, that don't do that or don't have like slips, they will put like what the item is inside or just like a number and like put like one, two, three on the outside of the box, just write it. And then they'll put this reference number in here. So I'll know where to put that label. And then we've got, does this parcel contain dangerous goods? So no, because I'm selling scrunchies. So you can, familiar my, fam, you can familiarize yourself with what dangerous goods are. So they don't particularly have to be actual um, dangerous goods. I heard that magnets and like things that have like lithium batteries and stuff like that in them um, can be classified as dangerous goods because they can't be on airplanes. Description, I usually don't do description. And then you go my own packaging or you can go um, Australia Post flat rate satchels or boxes because I'm using my own packaging, I just do that. I'm pretty sure you'll do that for satchels too, but don't quote me on that because I don't use them. Then you just put in your weight. So I have like a little kitchen scale, which I'll show you later. We'll just say it weighs 130 grams because that is usually how much like one or two scrunchies weigh. And then I'll put in my measurements because I have the exact same box every time. I know exactly how much it is. Uh, this is 22 by 17 by eight. Now, if you don't want to purchase boxes, you can actually go to like places like Bunnings or maybe even Kmart and get boxes from them. I know Bunnings has a lot of different size boxes and they'll be probably perfect to use and they're free. So if you're only shipping like a couple boxes, um, like parcels out and don't want to pay money for the boxes, especially from like Australia Post, cause the boxes from Australia Post can be like a dollar, two dollars extra. Use your own or like reuse ones that you get in your own parcels and whatnot. So this person was from Brisbane. So that's a major city. So it's a $7.52. So we can see here, postage, own packaging, band three, other major city. If I just click here. So we can see here that it's within a rolling eight week period or a 12 month period. Um, so if you, you know, have heaps of packages in December, but not many in January or February, March, et cetera, et cetera, 
um, it will roll over. So that's a good thing. Um, and you can see I've saved $1.43. Um, I can also get Sintron delivery uh, for this parcel, but I won't. And you can also get extra cover. So that will depend on what you put in. So I did do this for one of my international orders because it was a very large order. It was over uh, $600. So if you like, just put 200 in or whatnot, it will just correct it. So now it's saying it's still the 50, but I also get a discount for that. So yeah, that's another option you can do. And then we've got Express Post. So as you can see, I've saved $1.91 if I choose Express, um, which will bring it down to $10.04. And also in both the both tracking, um, normal and express, you get up to $100 compensation if they lose the package. I've never had my letters stolen, I suppose because it's very inconspicuous, but I've had two non-deliveries for express parcel post. I was able to contact Australia Post and they were able to reimburse me the cost of me making that product again, sending that product again, and then you just save the order. I won't save it because they'll have to delete it, to delete it later. I know that when you have um, all your stores linked up, like especially like eBay or whatnot, when you do purchase those labels, it, because it's already integrated, it will automatically say what your tracking number is for your order and um, mark it is shipped. I'm not 100% sure if that will be the same for Shopify and Etsy, but I know it is for eBay when you integrate it that way. Oh. Side note, <laughs> when I print out my labels for my Australia Post business account, I don't use like Dymo printer or anything like that at the moment. Um, I just haven't found that I need to purchase one of those yet because I'm only shipping maybe like 10 or 20 parcels a week. So it's not a big deal for me. But what I do do is either print it on just normal paper, A4 paper, or I print it on just normal A4 sticker paper. Um, which I purchased in bulk a long time ago from eBay. So I usually just print that out and normally with just like the parcel posts, they will print out in four so that I have one, two, three, four. And then I'll just use my guillotine to cut slices and then that's done. And I'll just stick them on the boxes which they go to because I already have the person that it's going to on the box. So I'll just stick it on top of that. Oh, okay, we're going to international now. International parcels. So I ship quite a few international parcels uh, because obviously I'm not shipping letters at the moment. With parcels, it's going to depend where you're sending them. Rather than with letters, they have like sort of a blanket cost for different regions. Parcels, it costs depending on which country you're sending to. So United States, for example, is around $21 for tracked parcel postage, $16 around about for non-tracked parcel postage. Then you've got Express, which is probably around $30. But for places like United Kingdom, you're paying a lot more. I think it's like $25 for tracked or $20 for non-tracked. And just for like how long they take, usually before COVID again, normally it would take probably one to two weeks to get the untracked ones, so the untracked parcels. I rarely sent the tracked parcels. I know that sounds so funny, but I didn't because like, the customer just didn't pay for it and they didn't really mind because they ended up just coming in a week or two. They were much quicker than uh, letters. I like they were one or two weeks quicker. So if you're sending parcels and you're not doing it through Australia Post business, this is what you may see and what you'll have to uh, fill out. So this is for tracking. I'm sure this form has a name, but I am, can't see what it's called. But it's one of these. Fill out who it's from, then who it's to. Then you fill out the customs declaration, which is uh, again, like the documents, gift, etc. In case of non-delivery, return by most economical route or treat as abandoned. With this one, I treat as abandoned every time unless it's an expensive order because I had a customer once who refused to pick up. So Etsy don't allow that anyway. They don't allow forced returns. She refused to pick up or just forgot to pick it up, I'm not too sure. And it got sent back to me. The item in total was three bows. So at the time I was probably selling for $5 each, so maybe $15, but it cost me $16 or $17 to pick that item up. I had to pay that money because it got shipped back to me. So that's pretty much what that is. Now, I do all mine through Australia Post, Biz Australia Post Business account. Uh, it's really easy, pretty much exactly how I showed you with the domestic, but there's a few different things you have to add. Like you have to have what the item is, you have to have um, how much the item is and all that sort of stuff. And also I get a big discount, I get like 20% off because I'm in band three. 
So that's really good. Okay. Now we're on to packaging. <laughs> when I do my postage, I do not do just like say $2.20 because that's how much the stamps cost. I factor in so much more. I factor in my time, all the cost of materials. So that's sticky tape, that's uh, business cards, thank you cards, that's uh, tissue paper. There's a lot more to even think about, but that is just shipping and handling. So I have a shipping and handling cost. I do not like to post um, for the bare minimum because that is not how much it costs me. It costs me a lot more to sh ship than just the bare minimum two stamps because also I need to pay for like the envelopes and whatnot and everything I just listed. In saying that, I'll show you what items I have to pay for extra and what I use. I still try and keep my costs down, but on Etsy, my shipping costs are a little bit more expensive than my normal site because the fees, they take out like three or 4% for shipping. And then they also take out 15% if the customer has purchased through like an advertised link. So these are just some of the things I use for my packaging. I will purchase these. These are from Kmart. I think they're $3. They are very loud. They're not quiet at all. So I know you can get quiet tape. This is loud. So I also purchased this from Kmart. I think it was $8. It's loud. And we've got thank you cards. So I've got this one. I've also got two other different ones, but this is one I'm using at the moment. I've got my business card and I've got like a return address label. So with all these items I got from Vistaprint, are very cheap. Never purchase anything off Vistaprint full price because they're always on sale, never do it. Um, I have this tape. So this is good for when I do ex express parcels, I will just tape this around uh, a few different bits and pieces of the parcel so people know. Got a weight. At the moment, this is dead flat. I need to change the batteries. So at the moment, I've just been using a different kitchen scale, but I think it's just like $5 or $10 from Kmart. Again, very important for when you're doing parcels because uh, you can easily see how much they weigh, but also when doing letters as well, because you know that you can't go over a certain amount. So like 125 grams. And if your items are a little bit more heavier, like scrunchies, they don't weigh much. They really go into the next bracket. I have these. So these are just Kmart poly bags. I don't particularly like using them because the environment and stuff but I still haven't run out of them since uh, my first video on like packaging, which was ages ago, because uh, I, I always buy in bulk. So I pretty much just use these for scrunchies that are going in the tracked envelopes, uh, especially the medium size, because I want to make sure they're safe. I also use them for some of my envelopes if the scrunchies are really thick, so velvet scrunchies, because they are very voluptuous, <laughs> I need to sort of squish them down. So I will use these and sort of like seal them in. Um, to make them thinner. Just ordinary tape. So I use tissue paper as well. As you can tell, these are really small pieces, but I'll usually use like half a sheet or um, a quarter of a sheet for depending on how big the parcel is. I also have stickers, so that's those. So I put those on all my like packages. Um, they're really cute. I used to print them out myself and literally I used to print them out myself and I have like a circle press thing. I used to press them, but I found Oz sticker printing, I think and $69, including shipping for a thousand of these. So cheap guys, oh my God. And they're quite nice. Like I wouldn't say they're perfect quality, but for the price and like they're better quality than the ones I was doing. So yeah, I will definitely recommend. Um, and they only took like two weeks to get to me or three weeks because I have like a turnaround time as well. And I've just got like sticker paper, which I don't have with me uh, in this room. I purchased that from eBay as well in bulk. Do you get worried about lost mail um, when I'm sending untracked? And honestly, no, I don't. 3,000 letters overseas, I've sent thousands more in just domestic Australia untracked. And out of all those, there's probably only been legitimately like two or three missing and where I've just been very much happy to just reship. It's just, it's not a big deal for me. Uh, I mean, if you're sending something that costs a lot of money to make and costs a lot of money to ship, I suppose, um, it would bother me more, but because like my items are so cheap, it's not a big deal for me to just reship something if the customer never receives it, gets lost in the mail, or if it gets damaged in the mail, whatnot. Yeah, I'm not bothered by it. Like the biggest reason that someone doesn't receive their item is because they've entered their address incorrectly or they've moved or just one of those sort of factors. I will always get that item back because I always have my return address on the back of envelopes. So that's another 
as a tip for you, always have your return address on the back because you never know someone might just enter their address incorrectly. I've talked everyone's ears off for so long now. If you have any other questions, please ask me below. Obviously I'll try and help where I can, but I cannot guarantee that I will be able to give like the most accurate information if it's something that I am not sure of. So thank you everyone for watching and supporting the channel. Make sure you've given this video a like and you've subscribed to my channel because I'll be having more videos like this and business related tips in the future including DIYs and just stuff in general. I just really want to help other small business and creators reach their potential. If you'd like some more tips or business advice, please comment below and I might be able to do a video on it as well. Yeah, okay. So that was really long, I'm sorry. I hope I hope you guys found this beneficial and uh, was able to help you out in any way possible. I hope it's given you a bit more understanding on Shirley Post business. Sorry I couldn't do one on like Sendle or whatever. Just I don't use it and it's just not relevant to me. And I hope I covered most of the areas that everyone wanted to know. I'm really sorry if I didn't, but just comment below and I'll try and get around to it as soon as I can. Thank you very much for watching and I hope you have a really lovely day. I am gonna go now. <laughs> Bye. Oh.